Sooner or later in business, everything comes down to money, and commercial vehicles are no exception. There are vans with prestigious badges, rakish bodywork, huge engines or lashings of equipment, but all have cost premiums to match. Toyota's Hiace, in contrast, is a sensible option that simply gets on with the job of reliably and economically delivering your goods. The short wheelbase model offers a good alternative to bigger, compact Berlingo sized vans, while the long wheelbase variant is equally well worth considering against entry level versions of medium sized models in the Transit and Volkswagen Transporter class. If you're looking for a spacious van that's not too big, and not too small, then you're probably not considering a Toyota Hiace, but perhaps you should be. Here's an LCV that largely ignores the size conventions of the light commercial market, with the short wheelbase version slotting in at uh, a loading capacity of 4.5 cubic meters, and this long wheelbase model offering 5.4 cubic meters. So, uh, to put that in perspective, you're looking at a short wheelbase Hiace that's uh, just slightly bigger than something uh, Transit Connect sized in the compact van sector, and a long wheelbase Hiace that's around the same kind of carriage capacity as entry level versions of something Transit sized in the medium range sector. Now that could be exactly what many business buyers want, if of course they bothered to consider this van in the first place. Though Toyota has been importing LCVs to these shores since 1972, its range of light commercials has traditionally been limited to the Hilux pickup truck, the Dyna light truck and this Hiace van, uh, which was uh, launched in the fifth generation form we're looking at here in 2004 and facelifted in 2009. So what has it to offer over higher volume rivals? Let's find out. Now, slip behind the wheel of this Hiace and you may well be pleasantly surprised at how car-like it is, thanks to a rather unvan-like, vertically orientated steering wheel. And once you've tilt-adjusted it and ratcheted up and down the height-adjustable driver's seat, it's pretty easy to find a comfortable driving position, aided by thoughtful touches like uh, a driver's armrest and window glass chosen to reduce UV glare. Now, as you'd expect, the Hiace has a diesel only engine range. Toyota hasn't offered petrol vans in the UK since 2003, with a couple of versions of the Japanese brand's trusty 2.5 litre D4D diesel engine. Short wheelbase customers get a 94 brake horsepower version of this unit with 230 newton meters of pulling power. If you go for the long wheelbase model that I've got here, uh, power is up to 115 brake horsepower and you get 294 newton meters of pulling power, enough to get you to an academic maximum speed of about 94 miles an hour. More important though is the pulling power you get via a six-speed gearbox that's actually pretty slick to use. It's enough pulling power to uh, tow a braked trailer with a weight of uh, 2,000 kilograms. Neither of the engines are especially silent, so it's just as well that in other areas, Toyota's designers have worked um, hard to prioritize refinement, fitting a full-height glazed bulkhead as standard, and uh, liberally using uh, sound deadening material around the cabin to significantly reduce noise, vibration and harshness. On the handling front there are more rewarding vans to drive. The lightness of the power steering makes it difficult to judge the limits of grip when powering through tight corners. Still for the same reason it's also true to say that there are few vans of this size that are easier to twirl around in urban conditions. Uh, it's here that you'll appreciate a turning circle that's measured at 5.5 metres in the short wheelbase model and 6.2 metres if you go for this long wheelbase variant. Now this isn't the prettiest or the most stylish van you're likely to come across, but then aesthetics don't tend to figure too highly on the wish lists of most LCV buyers. Toyota tried to smarten things up a bit in 2009 by adding a revised front grille in a not especially convincing attempt to embolden the look of the front end. Still, it remains 
a neat, if not especially memorable design, though I'd like to have seen side rubbing strips added along the flanks here to protect against everyday scrapes and dents. Flip open the bonnet and you'll find that this van boasts not one, but two batteries. A useful feature given the uh, drain on power imposed by some of the equipment that operators use in their vans these days and the need for vehicles like this to start first time every time regardless of the conditions. Entering inside you'll find a three person cab though the centre occupant must make do with a lap strap rather than a proper full seat belt. Now, if you're entering in fresh from a stint in a more recently introduced rival, perhaps one of the first things you'll notice is that the uh, gear lever is floor mounted rather than sprouting from the fascia as is the current trend. Fortunately, it's not too much of an impediment if you have to slide across the cab to avoid exiting in the face of oncoming traffic. Now the cabin has been enhanced in recent times with silver finished trim details, chrome instrument bezels and a tilt adjustable four spoke steering wheel. But it's not enough to disguise a layout that takes you back to older Toyotas, betraying the age of this design. Still, it's all clear, concise and easy to use and it feels built to last, though the shiny finish of the dash area in front of the front seat passenger feels like it might well be susceptible to scrapes and scuffs. In contrast to earlier versions of this design that omitted vital things like cup holders, this one has decent levels of interior storage space. So you've got the usual bins on both doors, although without a moulded area that'll hold bottles, as you'd find in some rivals. You've got uh, a couple of uh, cup holders here that'll hold a couple of cans. You've got a small lidded bin in front of the front seat passenger. There's a more useful larger bin at the bottom of the centre area of the fascia here. Look above and there's a full width overhead shelf. And you've also got a useful fold out section to the middle part of the seat, which has got a built in clipboard here for handling your delivery papers and so on. Now, list pricing suggests that excluding the dreaded VAT, High Ace customers will be paying around £14,000 for the short wheelbase model and just over £16,000 for the long wheelbase variant that I've got here. Now, those prices are competitive. The short wheelbase version slots in just above the priciest versions of vans like Citroen's Berlingo and Ford's Transit Connect in the compact van sector and is slightly bigger than the largest versions of those vans. The long wheelbase version meanwhile competes against entry level, the smallest entry level versions of medium range vans like uh, Mercedes Vito or Peugeot's Expert. Now, choosing a high ace could hardly be simpler. The range starts with the 280 SWB. That's Toyota speak for short wheelbase with a 2,800 kilogram gross vehicle weight. Now, this entry level variant comes only with the least powerful 94 brake horsepower D4D diesel engine. The alternative is the long wheelbase version that I've got here, badged uh, 300 LWB or in other words, long wheelbase with a 3,000 kilogram gross vehicle weight. And here you get the more powerful 115 brake horsepower D4D diesel, that's badged D4D 120. Now, whichever model you choose, standard equipment levels are good. All versions come with air conditioning, power windows, heated electric mirrors, uh, remote control central locking, an MP3 compatible CD stereo, a height adjustable driver's seat, a full height glazed bulkhead and a sliding side door. Safety provision though is limited to anti-lock brakes and a driver's airbag. Now as far as uh, extra cost items are concerned, apart from the usual things like a tow bar, a roof rack, front fog lamps, there are only really three optional packages. The first which I've got here is the professional pack and that includes Bluetooth phone compatibility and rear parking sensors. Then there's the metallic package which runs to metallic paint, colour coded bumpers and full wheel trims. And finally, there's a full interior load area ply lining pack. 
Now, it's one thing having a simple, straightforward range of products from which to choose, as Toyota offers with this Hiace. But the issue is whether such a limited selection will be enough to suit the needs of your business. Let's see. There's a basic choice between short and long wheelbase models, with the short wheelbase version having a, uh, a total of 4.5 cubic meters of load volume, and that slots it in just above the biggest models in the compact van sector, vehicles like Ford's Transit Connect or uh, Citroen's Berlingo. The long wheelbase version has a load area volume of 5.4 cubic meters, and that pitches it against the next category up, the, the category for medium range vans. Now it's not quite enough to rival uh, the smallest version of Ford's Transit, but it does put it on a par with entry level versions of vans like Mercedes Vito or Peugeot's Expert. Judging by the hundreds of thousands of high ace models that uh, Toyota sells around the world, these sizes seem to be just about right for many business people, whether they're delivery drivers or jobbing gardeners. And so let's take a closer look using this long wheelbase version as an example. Now, most businesses will want these twin side hinged rear doors that open out to 90 degrees, or if you release the stays, onto 180 degrees. There is the option of a single hatchback type uh, top hinged rear door, but if you go for that, then you might have trouble getting a forklift close enough to the vehicle to fully utilize all of the space available. And given that the loading height isn't one of the lowest in the sector, uh, you might need to allow for that eventuality. Still, once you've raised your cargo to loading height, even reasonably bulky stuff should go in okay, thanks to a rear door aperture 1,405 millimeters high and 525 millimeters wide. Now, unlike some of its competitors, this Toyota can't offer you things like uh, different roof heights or fold forward front passenger seats, but the availability of different wheelbases does, of course, vary the load length. It's either 2,335 millimeters in the short wheelbase model, or as in this case, 2,780 millimeters. Now, if you're planning to make full use of this Hiace's cargo capacity, then you'll want to know that the payload on offer is up to 1,060 kilograms in the short wheelbase version and up to 1,180 kilograms if you go for this long wheelbase variant. Add 10 kilograms to each of those figures if you go for the single hatchback rear door arrangement rather than these twin side hinge doors. Now, both of these figures are usefully just above uh, the maximum figures you'll get on entry level versions of medium range vans, including Ford's Transit. Now, smaller loads, of course, can be loaded in through the sliding side door, one of which is provided as standard on the passenger side. Now, though the door aperture it opens up is reasonably big, uh, 1,000 millimeters in height, at uh, 1,330 millimeters in width, it's not quite big enough to admit a Euro pallet. Now, once you get your cargo in, to stop it sliding forward, there are six tie-down lashing points on the floor and two more, uh, one opposite the sliding side door, one just behind it, um, just inside. Now, if you forget to use the lashing points and everything slides forward, then you'd be glad of this full-height steel glazed bulkhead. Uh, as standard, there's a tailored load floor and you also get half-height hardboard panels, but there's really no substitute for the full ply lining kit that I've got here to guard against interior scrapes and dents. Incidentally, if you really don't want this full-height bulkhead, say you're a carpet fitter uh, and you need to accommodate really long loads, then it can be deleted before delivery. As for operating costs, well, Toyota are keen to point out that uh, these are lower than you'll find with many competitors. Running costs of 11.31 pence per mile shouldn't be enough to break anyone's bank. Fuel consumption, well, most operators should achieve an average of around 36 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. Servicing intervals aren't especially infrequent every 10,000 miles or every 12 months, but you do get a three-year 60,000 mile mechanical warranty, a three-year paintwork warranty, and an unlimited mileage six-year anti-corrosion warranty, plus roadside assistance uh, in emergencies for the first year of ownership. 
Though this Hiace is a small player in the UK LCV market, across the world, where it's marketed in five continents and built in seven different countries, it's been a global success, garnering a well-deserved reputation for toughness and hard work with a business-friendly combination of adaptability, reliability and practicality. True, it doesn't slot into many of the light commercial markets established conventions of size, but then maybe that's uh, quite a good thing. Buying into a van that's neither too big nor too small seems a pretty good idea to me. I've given this vehicle a really tough time during this test and it's swallowed everything that I've thrown at it. On paper, there may appear to be more sophisticated LCV choices. In practice though, I've not come across many better ones.